Point three, periodic transfer is the preparedness now. So we need to look at atomic radius, ion size, electronegativity, ionization energy, and reactivity. All right, we're going to do these four objectives. So get ready and let's go. So make sure you read chapter 11, these pages in the book, and then chapter 12, section 12.2, up to the end of page 344. There will be questions. All right, atomic size. When we talk about atomic size, we're talking about the radius of an atom. So you have to be able to think about the distance from the nucleus to the outermost electron. Another way to measure it is to think about if two atoms are bonded together, the half of the distance between their nuclei would be the atomic radius. Okay. So atomic radius, is there a pattern to it? We also call it atomic size. If you look at this picture and take a mental picture of it, you can see this represents size of atoms. And you notice they get smaller going across the periodic table. You also see they get bigger going down the table. But let's talk about the periodic trend. Atoms get smaller going across the periodic table because they have stronger nucleus. They have stronger nuclear pool. Nuclear pool, meaning the nucleus is getting one more proton. Nuclear pool. And those electrons, electrons are in the same shell. So what does that mean? It means as you go across the periodic table, one more proton is in the nucleus for each of these atoms. So that's a stronger nuclear pull. What are they pulling on? They're pulling on the outer electrons, and they can pull them in closer because those outer electrons are in the same energy level as all of the other outer electrons. All right, why do atoms get bigger going down? Atoms get bigger, bigger going down because um, electrons are... Farther from the nucleus, and nucleus, and um, not as attracted to the nucleus because they're so far away. Okay. So as you notice, atoms get bigger going down the table. Right. So let's keep talking about it. If you understand this particular um, pattern about atomic radius, you'll be able to explain all of the other patterns. So stick with me, folks. So here are just the representative elements. I took out the transition metals and the um, inner transition metals. And you can see as atoms go down, they get bigger. As atoms go across the periodic table, they get smaller. Take a mental picture of this, and you can bring it to class with you. Okay. So let's um, keep this in mind as we talk about the rest of the trends. So atomic radius, bigger going down, smaller going up. What about electronegativity? Electro what? Electronegativity is the vocab word, all right? What does it mean? It's the ability to attract electrons when elements are making a bond. bond the bond part is important. So what's the trend in it? Well, fluorine, fluorine is what's up with electronegativity. Francium is what's not. Okay, so let's talk about what. Francium, I'm sorry I said francium, but I meant fluorine. Fluorine is small, and it's attractive because it has so many protons in its nucleus for its row. So it's going to be able to attract bonded electrons easily because the bonded electrons will be close to its, closer to its nucleus than for other atoms. Okay. So what we're doing here is I'm taking the trend in electronegativity and I'm explaining it using the size of the atom and the number of protons. Okay, so nuclear pool, that has to do with number of, of protons, and the size of the atom is atomic radius. So size and more protons, if the smaller an atom is and the more protons it has, the more it can attract electrons from another atom to make a bond. Okay, that was um, electronegativity, and we'll summarize it later. But now it's another property, another property, ionization energy. So here's the definition of ionization energy. You really see the word ion there? It's the amount of energy needed to remove an outer electron from an atom. All right? Electrons don't just go away for fun. It takes energy to make electrons go away. So in order to change sodium into a sodium ion, um, it takes 494 kilojoules of energy per mole of sodium atoms to remove an electron. So this is the amount of energy, kilojoules. All right? So what's the trend in ionization energy? Well, here's the group trend. Ionization energy decreases as you go um, down a family. So family, remember group or family? 
Ionization energy decreases going down the group or family, so it gets smaller as you go down. Why? Well, what happens to the size of atoms as you go down? Atoms get bigger as you go down. So if you're trying to take an electron away from a, an atom that, and the electrons are really, really far away from the nucleus, hello nucleus, hello electron, if the electrons are really far away, then it's going to take less energy to remove them because they're not feeling the pull of the nucleus. Okay? So outer electrons in big atoms are shielded from feeling the pull of the nucleus because they have a whole bunch of other electrons in between the nucleus and the outer ones. Okay. Um, so ionization energy, is there a trend in the period? Okay, so remember, group trends are up and down. Period trends, periodic trends are going across. Well, let's think about atomic size. Remember, atoms get smaller going across. So what should happen to the ability to take away electrons? Ionization energy increases going across the period. What? Let's talk about why. Well, as the atoms are getting smaller, they're also getting a stronger nucleus, and their electrons are pulled in closer to that stronger nucleus, so it's going to take more energy to remove an electron. So definition of ionization energy, amount of energy to remove electron. So as atoms get smaller, it's going to take more energy to take away their outer electron because they have a stronger nuclear pool going across the periodic tube. Okay? So... Something I need you to note. Valence electrons are those outermost electrons. And those electrons in the outermost shell are relatively easy to remove compared to core electrons. Now, I haven't used the word core electrons yet. I guess that's two words. We've used valence means outer, but core electrons are all the ones that aren't valence. So what's easier for an element to lose? It's easier to lose their valence electrons than it is to lose their core electrons. So what if we were looking at an atom and we're saying to ourselves, hey, I wonder how much energy it takes to take away one electron. Well, what if I wanted to take away a second electron or a third electron? Every time you take away another electron from an atom, you're taking, you have to measure the successive ionization energy, energy for the next electron or next electron or next electron. So if you notice, here's magnesium. Now magnesium um, has two outer electrons to start with. So if one of them goes away, it's going to take 738 kilojoules of energy for that to happen. If the second electron goes away, it's going to take 1,450 kilojoules of energy to make that go away. If, the, if magnesium attempts to lose a third electron, it's going to take, what, 7,730 kilojoules of energy to, to remove that third electron? Why? Why is this pretty smooth pattern? It kind of doubles. But then this huge stinking jump right there, what's that all about? Well, um, these two electrons for magnesium were its valence electrons. And so valence electrons being in that outer shell are relatively easy to remove compared to trying to take a core electron. Core electron. Bug. All right, so tell that to magnesium. All right, so... Here's what I want you to be able to do. Explain the way main, the main way atoms differ, and you really explain every trend. The main way atoms differ is they get bigger going down and smaller going across. So atomic radius is size. Atomic radius is the size of an atom. A big atom is less attractive because its nucleus is far away from its outer electrons. Right? Nuclear attraction. More protons means more nuclear attraction. But if you have a big atom with a lot of protons, it's not as good as a small atom with a lot of protons. Okay? So nuclear pull, let's all pull together. And then nuclear size, long distance is, um, is less attractive. Okay, I need to give you a warning about the next slide. And also a little joke time. This is a good time to pause. All right, ionic radius. Another trend, ionic radius. Well, we know atomic radius is the size of an atom, so ionic radius is the size of an ion. Okay, so cations are smaller than their atoms. Why? Think about it like onions. What do cations do? Well, they lose, they've lost electrons, okay? Cations are, have lost, right? Lost electrons. When you lose electrons, it's like taking away layers from an onion. What happens to the onion? It gets smaller. So atoms are bigger than their cations, okay? Anions get bigger, why? Well, what happens to an anion is it gains electrons. Gains electrons. So what happens when you gain something? Well, look what happens to the snake. It gets bigger. 
okay? So, um, anions, ions, look at that, are smaller than their atoms. Oh, what did I just do? Oh, anions. Come on, Harbin, get your act together. Anions are bigger than their atoms. Okay. So think about um, cations well, compared to atoms. You're peeling away the layers of, ion, of electrons, so cations get smaller. Anions are bigger than their atoms because you're adding electrons. You're adding something. Thanks, Shrek. Anions are like ovaries. Okay. Octet rule. Octet, remember number eight. But the rule is elements tend to, tend to gain, lose, or share electrons to have a full set of valence electrons. So here's the electron configuration and orbital diagram for sulfur. And here's a picture of sulfur. All right. So what happens for sulfur is if it puts two electrons into this outer shell, which means that's how it sounds, then it now has a full outer shell, full outer shell, and that makes it pretty stable. Okay, Stable like what? Stable like argon, the noble gas that's closest to sulfur. Okay, That's for nonmetals. Nonmetals. What about metals? Okay, look, it's sodium, and here's sodium's electron configured. Orbital diagram, electron configuration. Sodium has one outer electron, but if it loses it, goodbye, 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 then it gets smaller as a cat. But notice now it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in its outer shell, which is more like neon, which is more stable. So octet rule. Elements tend to gain, lose, or share electrons to have a full set. Valence electrons are those outermost electrons. And the noble gas is over here. Eight is great. All right, so then every other element is a noble gas wannabe. So some elements gain electrons to be like noble gases, and metals lose electrons. Nonmetals gain and metals lose. Nonmetals could share too. All right, so they react differently because they're doing different things with their electrons. Metals lose electrons and become positive. Nonmetals gain electrons and become negative. So what's the best metal reactor? It's francium. Why? Because it's big. So remember, it's at the bottom of its family. It's big, and it's unattractive, and it's a loser. So it's so big, it loses really fast. Big because electrons are far from nucleus. From nucleus. It's outer electrons. Unattractive because so big. So big. Right? Best non-metal reactor is fluorine. Fluorine. Why? Fluorine is small, and it's attractive and steals outer electrons. Small because strong nucleus in its row, strong nuclear pool, and attractive because of strong nuclear pool. So it's small because as you go across the table, you get to fluorine. And so nonmetals and metals have different reactivity patterns. All right, so on the periodic table, we have to distinguish between metals and nonmetals. Most reactive metals, woohoo! Most reactive nonmetal, woohoo! And then there's noble gases, don't react. Do not react. Okay. So, um, why? Full set of valence electrons. electrons. All right, home stretch to review. There are group trends, periodic trends. So think about up and down, think about across. Knowing atomic size can explain everything. So memorize. All right, metals are losers. It was a positive thing. Eight is great. Quiz yourself. Quiz me. Quiz your family. Quiz your lunch table to help you remember this stuff. So please look at the book. Like I said, look at Figure Twelve Three on page three forty four and do this. Okay. All right. Peace out from Harbs. Have a good one.